Here we have the Audiosonic amplifier, which doesn't have a real model number. On the back it says SK2020, but I'm not sure if that is the model number. This is hooked up to these two speakers. These are no-name speakers. Just says Hi-Fi speaker system there. There's no brand. Found those at the dump and I thought, oh well, another pair of cheap speakers. Back at home, I was really surprised to find out that these are containing two speakers. They're a two-way system. The speakers were made by Pioneer, the, you know, the speaker chassis. And there is even a proper crossover. Not only a cheap capacitor, there is also a little coil in there. And I hooked them up to this Audiosonic amplifier and I was really, really surprised by how good this amplifier sounds together with these two speakers. To make this amplifier sound even better, I thought, well, you gotta replace those capacitors in here. This is the underside of the amplifier. There is the amplifier board, and as you can see, these capacitors are not only old, they are also really, really cheap. And I also found out, you might be able to see that one down there, that has been replaced. Because all the other ones are looking different. It's a couple of hours later now, and I replaced a whole 30 capacitors in this Audiosonic amplifier. I had some difficulties because I simply forgot to order this capacitor there, so that's still the original type. Also, these and these capacitors are original, so there are five original capacitors in there left. Those four I couldn't replace because two of them are hidden underneath all those cables. And of course, I could not go and change them on only one channel because I want those two channels to sound identical. Um, I did not mess with that with those wires because I have had a lot of problems with these wires here. Uh, these are a load of ground wires and it was incredibly hard to get them resoldered for some reason. Um, I had to turn the temperature on my soldering iron all the way up to to actually get the solder to melt. Now I have the amplifier hooked up. It's still working. Surprise, surprise. Um, it still has all the background noise, of course, because I also had not the chance to replace that capacitor there, filter capacitor, um, because as you can see it's mounted in that metal ring there and um, I couldn't get a capacitor that was as big as this one, unfortunately. Also, I'm thinking about building in a completely new power supply, a stabilized power supply, to get rid of all the hum. Now, <clears throat> currently there is some extra hum anyway because the soldering iron is interfering with the amplifier. It definitely sounds better than it did before. The bass um, was kind of weak and um, you had to turn up the volume a lot to get uh, all that additional bass that was missing on lower volumes um, and you also had to uh, adjust the bass and treble regulators well that's not necessary anymore those regulators are all flat and also the loudness is turned off not the heat sinks but the transformer gets pretty hot if you take out too much power now, there is one last problem that I want to fix. This. Hear that pop noise there? I built in this little capacitor here. It's just something below one microfarad. And this um, prevents sparks uh, inside the switch. That's a nice little thing if you install it. It will protect your speakers because we now turn off the amplifier. Silence. Now, to, in today's units, you'll always find a capacitor like this. Um, 
At least if you have a real power switch, you don't need them for all that standby crap. Um, but back in the days, that capacitor wasn't common, so it's always a good idea to put something like that in. And there we have the amplifier all back together in its wooden case. <laughs>